Well, hello again. Welcome to another edition of Crop Life Retail Week. Paul Shrimp, happy to join Eric Spilagoy again from our undisclosed locations. Eric? Hello, Mr. Paul. I know we, before we got on the air, I was commenting on your neat looking radiator there over your shoulder. And uh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's impressive looking. So, well, I know it's, I know it's, you know, people obsess about their pets and they have to be careful and all that. But as it turns out, birds are extremely sensitive to Teflon and Teflon coated anything. In fact, they could just drop dead. So really? everyone knows that I have a parrot here, uh, this one. And uh, when I have the heaters on up here, it has to be something that doesn't have a Teflon coating on it, or it could, it could harm or even kill the bird. So I can't use nonstick coatings on all of our pans are like this traditional iron or, or steel or aluminum, you know, you name it, but anything with Teflon is verboten. So. All right. right. Well, now I, if I ever get a box of extra steel wool or Brillo pads, I know who to give them to because you certainly can use them versus me. So, yes, we go through plenty of those. So, what's going on today, sir? Well, actually, uh, Paul, we've got uh, some good news. Uh, I know a couple of videos ago, I can't remember if it was still here in January or in December. Uh, we were talking about the fact that uh, our friends in China uh, have been buying lots and lots of U.S. agricultural products. And uh, this week we found out that uh, the country has made another huge purchase of uh, U.S. agricultural products. Uh, China this week has purchased 1.36 million tons of U.S. corn. Uh, now that, Paul, is significant because it's the largest purchase of corn by China since July 2020. And I know uh, just before we got in the air, I was checking commodity prices and it looks like corn now for March is trading at 536 per bushel, which uh, earlier in the week it was at about 442. So uh, not quite a dollar price increase. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of that is uh, being motivated and spurred on by this uh, large China purchase of corn. Yeah, with the with speed of information and the way things are you know, digital, we just saw the, the whole Wall Street blow up with, with GameStop and Reddit and all those folks. Um, it's uh, it, it, Things move in an, in an awful hurry and people are looking to gain any kind of advantage they can get. And I saw Twitter blow up this week too. So you just you just you get those early indicators where everyone's like, what in the world's going on? And <laughs> information is shooting back and forth. So it travels so fast. Um, things move move so rapidly. It's it's amazing. But uh, but yeah, congratulations to everyone who was able to, to cash in on that. Yeah, no, this will be really good news, I'm sure, going forward. And uh, who knows? We'll have to see if that maybe spurs a little more corn planting as we go here into move into the spring season. So. Uh, and one other thing, Paul, you remember, you know, I know you and I back in the days when we used to travel, which seems like a million years ago, but remember when we used to be in Washington, D.C. or the surrounding area uh, of Virginia or Maryland, and we'd say, hey, we get off the train from the airport and we're like, you know, we only got time to stop and see one trade association because they're all spread out all over town. Well, uh, earlier here in January, our friends at the Fertilizer Institute, the Agricultural Retailers Association and Crop Life America decided to co-locate in a, uh, a single building in Arlington, Virginia. And this week we found out that our friends at the Council of Producers and Distributors of Agrotechnology, CPDA, have also decided to join them in that same building. So Paul, in the future, if you happen to find yourself in the Washington DC area, all you gotta do is hop up to Arlington and uh, in a single building stop, you can visit four of the trade groups that we know and love. So uh, there you go. Good deal. Uh, you know, it is. it was always a strategic, uh, a strategic adventure to try to get to everybody all at once. One, finding when they're all in, and then two, just shuttling. I mean, I used to do it just because I did it so much uh, several years ago, was just try to do it entirely on the mark train without using a uh, without using a, a cab or, or an Uber. And it can be done, but <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's interesting. Yeah, it certainly makes it a lot easier. And I know some of the folks are bummed that they're not in the city anymore, just the standpoint of being so close to... Uh, so close to the capital and the action and the media and so forth. But uh, on the other hand, um, you know, being able to share uh, share resources like that, I know something that folks have been talking about also a lot is being able to get these ag associations into one place where they can they can benefit from 
the proximity and, and the savings and costs. So it's great, good for them. Yep, yep. So now, Paul, I've got a quiz for you. Uh, oh, you'll have to try to connect the dots on these three items. Uh, and I guess the question will be, I'll, I'll, I'll post you with the questions afterwards, but the three items would be bourbon, hot browns, and tractor pulls. So you tell me the, the, uh, what that is the answer to, uh, but the question is, what will agricultural attendees not be doing here in 2021 in excess? I'm not sure, but it sounds like a fun weekend in Louisville to me. Yeah, that's right, at Louisville, yes. Normally, uh, as we've said a couple of videos ago, the National Farm Machinery Show, the largest indoor farm event that goes on during the wintertime, had uh, originally postponed their 2021 event from mid-February until the end of March. But uh, lo and behold, just before we got on the air, I got a press release from the folks at uh, the association that puts that show together and said because of uh, resurgence in COVID-19 uh, cases and the fact that the vaccinations are rolling out a little slower than anticipated. They've decided to just call it a year. There will not be a National Farm Machinery Show here in 2021 and uh, it will resume hopefully February 16th through the 19th in uh, 2022 in Louisville. So the folks that enjoyed the hot browns and the tractor pole and the bur extra bourbon on 4th Street, uh, you'll have to wait another year to, uh, to feed those uh, desires, unfortunately. Yeah, well, I mean, discretion is the better part of valor there. Imagine, you know, and, you know even, even if you had just 100,000 people or significantly less than they normally get. I mean, you're talking about a logistical, real logistical challenge. So it's, you know, if you can't give the full experience and, you know, there's just a lot of virtual events out there right now, then maybe you're just better off waiting, uh, waiting for a year and, and hoping, hope, hopefully by 2022, this will be completely under our feet and we can, we can enjoy the show and, and the hot browns and whatever you do with bourbon, that's, that's on you, sir. <laughs> I'm just thinking of things they like to do in Louisville on 4th Street when I've been there for National Farm Machinery in the past. Usually you go down there, you get you stop at a little uh, place to get something to eat, a hot brown if they have it, and then you finish the night with a little bourbon before heading back uh, back to your hotel in the uh, cab. So you're not driving, of course, but, uh, you know, being responsible here, Paul. You betcha. So I'll just wrap it up with, you know, we, we had our second meeting of the conference committee for, um, uh, for the, the Tech Hub live event that we're putting together for July, speaking of hopeful the vaccines continue to move along swimmingly, uh, or hopefully they start moving along swimmingly here very soon. Um, uh, that show will be in Des Moines, but uh, just accumulating knowledge and talking to a lot of smart people about a lot of what's going on. Had a chance to catch up with Robert Syke today, um, which uh, he's with AgVisor Pro. He's been with DOT. He started AgriTrend and of course sold that to Trimble years ago, but uh, just a real ambitious entrepreneur. And, you know, I, I you know, with AgVisor, you know, where it goes, where it eventually ends up, you know, who knows, but, the, you know, they're, they're really trying to play on that idea of, you know, connecting um, smart advisors with farmers, with, uh, with retailers, getting everyone kind of connected uh, in a network uh, and being able to access each other um, more readily. And, you know, that, and it's not a new notion by any means, but being able to scale that in, in a way that's meaningful for agriculture has been the challenge. So, if anybody can do it, I think he can, but, uh, but just to, you know, it's great to, to, to engage these people again, talking about, um, you know, the future and really looking about looking at things that are, I think, really going to be bright in terms of specifically with connectivity and the idea of connected ag, which is a lot of what we're going to talk about, I think, with, with, uh, with Tech Hub is, is how do we connect these last little bits? How do we get all these things together so that we can increase adoption so that we're working more efficiently and moving data and making decisions now and not waiting um, you know, and making it reliable and then using that data for hopefully sustainability initiatives and, and, and carbon credit kind of programs as, as those things roll out more, more efficiently. So um, we're, you know, we're really looking forward to July. It's gonna be great to get people back together again and, um, and hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll see a lot of, of you there. And if you're interested, you know, go, to, uh, go to our website at techhublive.com and find out more. We'll, uh, we keep that updated regularly with things that we're working on. 
Sounds good, Paul. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, based on my calendar, the uh, Tech Hub Live may be the uh, first event in like 16 months that uh, I may be attending. I, I can't remember a uh, such a long stretch without travel, but uh, yeah, it would be about 16 months from when I last traveled at the end of Commodity Classic in 2020 to that event in Des Moines. Yeah, yeah fingers crossed it actually goes down. I'm looking forward to it. Indeed, sir. And thank you all for joining us for this edition of Crop Life Retail Week. We will see you next week. If you have questions or comments about today's episode of Retail Week, contact us by email or Twitter or type your message in the comment section below. Your feedback is important to us. We'll try our best to address your thoughts in next week's episode. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.